number one in your homework. The instructions say describe how the given function can be obtained from one of the basic graphs, then graph the function. Look what we're dealing with. We're dealing with y equals parentheses x plus 3 squared. The basic graph, the basic function, is y equals, look at the x, look at the exponent, x squared. Okay, now functions have an inside and an outside. This is the inside. In fact, let me write it like this. And then there's stuff you can write out here, and there's stuff you can write out here. And there's stuff you can write in here, in the inside. This plus three is on the inside with the X. We have a name for that. Of course, don't math people always have names for things. This is called the argument of the function. Argument is good enough. Anything inside the argument deals with stuff that the X deals with. Moving left or right, for instance. We haven't gotten to other things yet. Well, here you've got a plus three in the argument. That's a horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. In the opposite direction from what you'd expect. But the way to make sure is always to take the argument and set it equal to zero and solve for x. This will tell you exactly which direction you're going to be moving in and how many units. Your chef, your chef, your shift is going to be to the left three units. So y equals x squared is being shifted left three units. Let's go back and see how you write it. Okay. The basic graph is y equals x squared. And that plus 3 is a horizontal shift to the left. So all I have to do is read all of these and find one that says shift the graph 3 units to the left. Bingo, B is my answer. And I'm going to write type X squared. Nice work. Now they want us to graph it. Okay, let's do it. 
click y equals x squared, you've got a picture in your notes. It looks like that. That is the icon that represents it. I click here, and then it says, click the graph to plot your curve. Okay. I would normally start here, but since the graph is being moved three units to the left, I'm going to move to negative three and click. Oh, all right. Now what? Oh, it's asking me stuff over here. All right, so it doesn't matter where. Let me delete it and go back and do it again. I click here. It's not going to matter where I click. I'm going to get the basic y equals x squared graph. Now over here, over here is where I talk about, the, is where I choose what the different transformations are. All right, well, I know that I'm going to the left three units. That's a horizontal shift. So a horizontal shift. No, stretch. Here's the horizontal shift down here. You have a slider box, and we see it tells you where you are. We need to go to negative three. Okay, now see how that moved my graph over. That's all they're asking. I don't have any reflections, and I don't have any vertical shifts. Well, this is stretch or shrink, and we haven't learned about that yet. We will. Now I check. There you go. So this is even easier than I thought it was. Now, look at this. Describe the graph of g of x equals x minus 2 and how it can be obtained from the basic graph. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. I should probably make it bigger. There. Describe how the graph of g of x equals x minus 2 can be obtained from one of the basic graphs. Then graph the function. The basic graph is y equals x. You don't see any parentheses. y equals x. This is a minus 2 at the end, so it's going to be a vertical shift down to units. So that's what I'm looking for now. Shrink it horizontally, shift it down to units. That's what I want. These, these all say other things. Shift it left two units, shift it up two units. No, we are going down two units. And the basic graph is Y equals. Shift it down two units, okay. Now, I have to make it smaller. Okay. Now, graph it. All right. Click. Y equals X is a straight line. Like I said before, it's the mommy and daddy of all straight lines. So, I click the line icon. And then, if it's like it was before, I click anywhere. Only it's not like it was before. You boo-boo heads. Okay. So I have to actually graph it. So to graph a line, you've got to have two points. Okay. So what we need to do is calculate two points. This time we have y equals x minus 2. Okay, if x is 0, we'll have 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And if x equals 2, 
then we'll have two minus two, which is zero. Now I have my two points, zero, negative two, and two, zero. Goodness, they are inconsistent, even worse than me. All right, zero, negative two. And always look in the upper right hand corner or the right hand end of the of the yellow banner and that'll tell you exactly where you're you know the point you're on and then i'm going to two zero i'm going to click there and save it and check it okay wow look at this We're going to talk, now is the time. We are going to talk about what happens when you've got a number in front of your bit, in front of the basic graph. So I would rather do it this way. Okay, let's look at, that would just be a better example. One fourth times the absolute value of X minus four. So what we have now is G of X equals one fourth times the absolute value of X minus two. Well, this is your basic graph. Y equals the absolute value of X is your basic graph. This is your vertical shift down because it's a number being added or subtracted on the far right side. It's not inside with the X, it's outside. So I'm going to say this is the vertical shift down because of the minus sign. But what is that we have not talked about a number in front of the argument of the function? It's not inside with the X, so it's not in the argument. So it's in the outside part of the graph. What do we do with that. This. OK. When you have a number. A fraction. Or a decimal. Between. zero and one, less than one, greater than zero. When you have a number like that, what this does is it vertically shrinks your graph. This is called a vertical shrink. OK, that's a vertical shrink. So the basic graph is being shifted down two units and being shrunk by a factor of one fourth. Let me show you on the graphing calculator what that does. I'm going to Y equals and I have to say absolute value of X. I want to graph the basic function. It's not there. I have to hit the right arrow key to come over where num is highlighted and abs for absolute value is right there at the top. So I hit enter. And then I type X. 
and then I move to the outside. If you have the older version of the calculator, you close, um, uh, there's a parenthesis, you close the parenthesis. If there is a parenthesis, I'll do it both ways. However, this way, I've got y equals the absolute value of x. Here's the graph. Now I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to go down to y2, and I'm going to type parentheses, one divided by four, parentheses closed. That's one fourth. Math num enter and put the absolute value of x and then hit the right arrow key. Now what I've got is one fourth times the absolute value of x and this is the way that graph looks. I've made it lower. This has been shrunk to down here. And this has been shrunk to down here. It's also made it fatter, but that's because this has two sides. So the one fourth lowers these sides. If I had a number greater than one, like positive four, No, I don't want second, I want math. Four times the absolute value of X. That would expand it. The sides would be higher. So this would be a vertical expansion. They don't call it expansion, they call it stretch. Should be expansion, but they call it a stretch. So, isn't that pretty? Yeah, it's kind of pretty. Anyway, that's what we're dealing with. So that is another kind of transformation for you. Start with the graph of h of x equals the absolute value of x. Then, shrink it because one-fourth is a number between zero and one. Shrink it vertically by a factor of fraction, or I guess, no, I don't guess you need a fraction, do you? You could just go one-fourth, but one Finally, shift it down two units, down two. See, you're reading this. You learn to read it just like you would read a book. Type an integer or a simplified fraction. Well, I did that, thank you. Yeah. And now you know about vertical stretches and shrinks. Okay, you do not need a graphing calculator to choose the right one, which is B. All you need is to reason this out. You've got, you do, aha. You've got your basic, it's over here, your basic V graph. It's multiplied by a one fourth, so that lowers the arms. And then you, you move it down to units. So you have a flatter absolute value 
moved down to units. Could only be that one. This is moved up. This is skinnier. That's what would happen if you had a four and moved up. This is over to the side. That's a horizontal shift. That's a vertical shift up. That's a vertical shift up. This is a shrink and so is that. But this goes up and you need to go down. So I'm choosing B. Fantastic. I love that. Okay, now we've got another, oh, we've got X to the third. Doesn't matter. Look at that. Here's your X. Let me make this bigger. You've got X plus two in parentheses cubed. So your basic function is going to be X cubed. The minus in front turns it upside down, which is a reflection across the X axis. And the plus two on the inside, in the parentheses with the X, is going to shift the graph either left or right. And this plus is gonna shift it to the left, not what you would expect. So that's what you're going to have. Let's just say y equals. You've got y equals negative parentheses. x plus 2 cubed. So your basic function is y equals x cubed. Then you're going to reflect it across the X axis. And the troubling one is always that. A number added or subtracted in the parentheses or the absolute value bars with the X is always going to be a horizontal shift. Always. You just have to decide which way. The foolproof way, if you forget, is to take the X plus 2 and set it equal to zero and solve for X. So that you get X equals negative two. And what this tells you is you're gonna move left two units. So those are your transformations. A reflection across the X axis, and a horizontal shift to the left two units. So that's what we're going to write here. Uh, start with the graph of y equals x to the third, and then, this says reflect across the y-axis, so I throw it out. Reflect across the x-axis, Shift left two units, yes. If you said shift right two units and reflect across the x-axis and it were a test, I would give you partial credit for that. But the true answer is you're moving to the left two units. So shift left two units and then reflect across the x-axis. So B, is what I'm going to choose, and there. 
X. Uh, 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 uh. Look at that. There. X to the third power. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah. And now I have to do this. All right, now, <clears throat> you are not familiar with y equals x to the third power, but you have a cheat sheet now. Look up the cubic function and you will see that it's shaped like this. So click here. Now click the graph to plot your curve. I have no idea if I'm going to get to click anywhere. Okay, you can click anywhere on this. Um, this is the basic y equals x cubed graph. Now, the way we're going to get the right graph is not to graph points, but instead to talk about this. For instance, we're going to have a reflection, reflection over x axis. I'm going to click that. And then I'm going down to unit. No, I'm not. I'm going to the left two units. So that is a horizontal shift to the left two units. So I go negative two. And that should be what it looks like. So I'm going to save. Check answer. Oh, yes. See, it's like a puzzle. Are you reading this correctly? And you are learning a new language. Let's, we'll have time for one more. Ah, now that, let's try to find something harder. Nah, let's not. This is the graph of y equals x squared, x to the two power. It's being shifted horizontally to the left two units and then it's being shifted up one unit. So now that we know that, let's go to something more interesting. Because here we have another vertical shrink. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of this and then move it over to the scratch paper. So I can make it nice and big. Where to go? There it is. My life is a life of adventure. There. OK, here's what we've got. I don't know what that was. That was probably words. Um, one third times X to the third minus six. So just make sure that's what I had. Yes. Oh, that was the beginning of the word can. Okay. So. The basic graph. The basic graph or basic function is y equals x to the third. And then you're going to shrink it, a vertical shrink by one 
third. And that's y equals one third times x to the third. And then you're going to do a vertical shift down. Uh, six units, down six units. And that's what that minus six is. So you're going to have y equals, or g of x equals, one third times x to the third minus six. You have your basic function and then you have two transformations. So we go back here. How can the graph of this be obtained from the graph of that? So they give you the basic graph. Well, I'm going to shrink it vertically and shift it down six units. They don't even ask you how much. That's A, I'm gonna click on A. Okay. Now, click, this is Y equals X to the third. Okay, now we're gonna show our, our stuff a little differently up here. Vertical stretch or shrink. It's a vertical shrink. Um, well, uh, one divided by three. Oh, okay. Pretty smart. And we're going to do a vertical shift, vertical shift down six units. So I go to negative six. And notice how the graph moves with me. And those are my only two transformations. We've got time for one more. We have three transformations here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, where's my thing? Where's my thing? There it is. Okay. Here, all right. You have inside here, inside the argument, first your basic function is x squared. Then, now this can be very tricky, so you need to pay attention to this, even though I'm running a tad, I'm not running late yet, okay. Now you're going to have a vertical shrink. How come we've only seen vertical shrinks? There are stretches, really. A vertical shrink of one half, not negative one half, positive one half. This negative sign is a reflection they're used for different things, so they're considered separately. Reflection across the x-axis. In other words, you're going to turn it upside down. 
So you've got y equals x squared, you're going to shrink it, which is going to make it wide or open, but the arms are lower. You're going to shrink it by a factor of one half, and then you're going to reflect it across the x-axis. And then you're going to move it, move what you've got, two units to the left. So you also have a horizontal shift two units to the left. Left, two units. Okay, so once you decide on that, you can go back and do this. Start with the graph of y equals x squared. Shift it. There's only one shift. Shift it left. Two units. And then something, it something. So I'm going to have to see the context here. Shrink it. It's definitely shrink it vertically. You haven't learned about horizontal shifts yet. I mean, horizontal shrinks and all that stuff. You're going to shrink it vertically by multiplying each y coordinate, because it's vertical, by this fraction one half, not negative one half. One divided by two. And then reflect it across the x-axis. That minus sign is used separately. It's a separate transformation. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah. All right, here. We've got the basic graph of x squared, and they actually give that to us. Now, what are we going to do? We've only got one, sh oh, we've got two shifts. So let's see what they're talking about. We have a vertical shift, we have a horizontal shift. So shift it, aha. They are talking about the horizontal shift. Okay, that's in here. Shift it six units to the right the opposite direction from what you'd expect. Shift it six units to the right. Right six. Then reflect it across the x-axis. And then shift it up. Yeah, up two. Okay, well, all right, I guess I am done. 